Good morning. Today is Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. On Hanukkah, we add a prayer to the Amidah, the Shemona Esrei, and to the benching, the Birkat Amazon, Grace After Meals. And the prayer that we add on Hanukkah is two short paragraphs. First is the paragraph Al Hanisim, where we thank God for the miracle of Hanukkah. And then a short paragraph that is a brief description of the Hanukkah story. We do the same thing for Purim. We have the same first paragraph, thanking God for the miracle of Purim, and then a short paragraph that describes the Purim story, the Purim miracle, and that paragraph for Purim begins with the words, Be me Mordechai ve Esther, in the days of Mordechai and Esther, and Haman and Achashverosh, and this is what happened. Now, clearly, in the paragraph for Purim, Starting with the words, in the days of Mordechai and Esther, doesn't only locate the Purim story in time to tell us when it happened, it also tells us the two main characters. Mordechai and Esther were the two people central to the entire narrative and miracle of Hanukkah. For Hanukkah, I'm sorry, (laughs) Mordechai and Esther were central to the entire narrative and miracle for Purim, excuse me. For Hanukkah, Likewise, we have a paragraph that describes the Hanukkah story, and it starts with the words, Bime Matisyo ben Yochanan Kohen Gadol. In the days of Matisyahu, the son of Yochanan, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, this is the story of Hanukkah. So that locates this narrative in roughly halfway through the Bayes Sheni, the Second Temple period. So the Second Beis Amigdash stood for roughly 400 years. The Hanukkah story happens at about 165 before the Common Era. So roughly halfway through the Second Temple period, of course, Purim was earlier in history. Purim was during the exile between the First Beis Amigdash and the Second Beis Amigdash. Hanukkah is later. So we know when the Hanukkah story happened during the time of Matisyo, the son of Yochanan, the Kohen Gadol. It's interesting that the prayer identifies Matisyo as the son of Yochanan, Kohen Gadol. Why do we need to know Matisyo's name in this, Matisyo's father's name in this prayer? After all, the corresponding prayer for Purim does not mention the father of Mordechai or the father of Esther. Why, in this paragraph, do we mention the father of Matis Yehu? Now, the first thing I have to say to you is it's not clear who this Yochanan Kohen Gadol was. There's a dispute among the commentators whether, because in the Talmud we have someone named Yochanan Kohen Gadol, Yochanan the high priest, who was active in the second Beis Hamikdash period. He was the high priest in the second Beis Hamikdash period. It is not clear if the father of Matisyo was this same Yochanan Kohen Gadol that is mentioned a number of times in the Talmud, or whether it's a different one, because the name Yochanan is a common name. It could be there were more than one Yochanans who were a Kohen Gadol. We don't know the names of all of them. And so that's a little bit unclear, but it seems like it's probable, or at least possible, that the father of Matisyo Yochanan Kohen Gadol is the same person that we refer to in the Talmud in a number of very famous passages about this Kohen Gadol. Please keep in mind that as a consequence of the Hanukkah story, which happens about halfway through the Second Temple period, a monarchy is established in Israel It's kind of short-lived, but a monarchy is established. But the first half, approximately, of the time of the second Beis HaMikdash, there was no monarchy, and in fact, the Kohen Gadol was the highest leader in Israel. So, 
this Yochanan Kohen Gadol was not only a spiritual leader, he was at that time the highest leader at all in Israel. In the Talmud, we learn a number of stories about Yochanan Kohen Gadol. We also learn that he initiated five takanos, five new rulings, and all five of them, which are described in the Talmud, are quite bold. They make significant breaks from earlier practice, and of course, he established it, and they were accepted. So that that attests to his stature as a scholar, as an authority, and also his uh, the respect that was shown to him, the importance that was shown to his rulings to follow these bold new rulings, the fact that he was accepted, attests to how important he was, how great he was, and how much of a leader he was. And therefore, Rabbi Chaim Jachter points out that it's not surprising that the son of Yochanan, Kohen Gadol, would be this person, Matis Yo, who would be such a revolutionary to introduce and to initiate the Hanukkah story, because his father, Yochanan, Kohen Gadol, had a bold path in preserving the Torah, and his son, Matis Yo, follows in his footsteps, and he paves his own unique path to preserving the Torah's integrity in the face of the steep challenges of assimilation that he faced leading to the Hanukkah story. But there is one glaring, terrible, very difficult to understand narrative in the Talmud. It, it, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. The Gemara says that Yochanan Kohen Gadol, Yochanan the high priest, again, the highest leader in Israel of his time, and again, one of the most respected leaders, Torah leaders of his time, after serving as Kohen Gadol, the high priest in the Beis Hamikdash for 80 years, 8-0, he lost his faith in God and he became a tzaduki, one who has heretical views of denying the authenticity of the oral law of Torah Shabbal Peh. So number one, how is such a thing possible? How can you have a person who is so great, so respected, and in a position of Torah authority for so long and then to lose his faith, to become a heretic, how is it possible, number one? And number two, if that in fact is what happened to him, why do we mention his name in this prayer about Hanukkah? I mean, we, why don't we just say, be me Matisyo in the days of Matisyo? Why should we add the son of this person who turns out to be a terribly wicked, heretical person? Why should we mention his name on Hanukkah? Rabbi Joel Grossman, when he was a teenager, used to assist Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, of course, was the greatest halakhic authority of his time and of modern times, probably, lived in the previous generation. And when Rabbi Moshe Feinstein and his rebbets and his wife, when they would go to visit their daughter, and son-in-law, rabbi, and rebbets in Tendler in Muncie. So they would come to visit. Whenever Ramosha Feinstein was in Muncie, this rabbi, Joel Grossman, but he, then he was a teenager, he would um, help Rabbi Feinstein and be with him and kind of assist him in whatever he needed. And Rabbi Grossman noticed that Ramosha utilized every single second to learn Torah. Even to review Talmud between 
the aliyos of reading the Torah in Shul. There were a few seconds in between one ali and another, and Ramosha would open a sefer. And one time, and this was when Ramosha was at an advanced age, he was in his 80s at this time, so the then teenager, Joel Grossman, said to Ramosha, Rebbe, why is it that you have to look for every single second to, to learn and review Torah? I mean, you know it all. You know it by heart. You couldn't possibly need to still study anything. Why do you keep looking for every second to keep learning and reviewing Torah? And the answer that Ramosha gave is just stunning. Listen to the words. If Yochanan Kohen Gadol could become a heretic after 80 years of serving as Kohen Gadol, the high priest, Moshe Feinstein, referring to himself, Moshe Feinstein could also go off the path. Wow. Ramosha felt that he had to keep studying, keep learning Torah, keep reviewing. He felt that it's possible. It seems absurd to us, of course, but it's possible. If it happened to Yochanan Kohen Gadol, it could happen to Moshe Feinstein, he said about himself. In other words, Rav Moshe Feinstein understood that the lesson we are to learn from this narrative about Yochanan Kohen Gadol is that we must always be in a mindset of constant spiritual growth. And the, the, the consequence of that is that the only alternative to constant spiritual growth, the only alternative is spiritual descent. There's no other option. Now, this is the same message we have in the way that we light the Hanukkah menorah. On the first night, we light one light. Second night, two lights, third night three, until the eighth night we light eight lights. Each night we increase. Why is that the pattern in how we light the menorah? The Talmud explains, based on the principle, malin bakodesh, we ascend in holiness, veloma read in bakodesh, but we do not descend in holiness. So we start at one, we go higher and higher and higher. We don't start out at eight, and go lower and lower and lower. And that's a principle that applies in every single area of life. That we have to be constantly growing. And let's pay attention to the a close reading of these words of the Talmud. Malim Bakodesh, we must ascend in holiness, velo maridin, and not descend. In other words, those are the only two choices. You can't stay at the same place. You were either ascending, or God forbid you're descending. And Rav Moshe understood that he had to be ascending even in his 80s. And we need to learn the lesson that the lighting of the Hanukkah menorah teaches us. And says Rabbi Chaim Jachter, that's why we mention Yochanan Kohen Gadol's name in the prayer. Because we want to remember what happened to him as well. He is also, in a certain sense, a central character of the Hanukkah story. Because the result of the Hanukkah story is that we learn that we need to be constantly ascending in holiness. Otherwise, we will be descending. Yochanan Kohen Gadol, the father of Matis Yehu, with the terrible ending that the Talmud records, he is essential to how we light the menorah, and therefore it is essential that we remember him in the prayer we say on Hanukkah. My friends, I want to wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.